Good evening, I'm Jennifer Rabb, and I have the great privilege of serving as president of Hunter College, where the American dream continues to come true. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this timely conversation about computer science education and workforce development, which is so crucially important as our city emerges from the COVID pandemic. This is National Computer Science Education Week. No better time to remind the community and particularly our students that aptitude in computer science is more than ever a pathway to success in the 21st century. If New York City is truly to become Silicon Alley and compete with Silicon Valley, we must have more students graduating college with expertise in computer science. Despite our dependence on technology, which was driven home in full force during the pandemic, we as a nation and particularly the state of New York have not sufficiently focused on ensuring that our students are learning computer science in middle and high school. So they are prepared to study computer science in college and go on to careers in the extraordinary tech industry. But today we are doing much more than talking about the importance of computer science education. I have the distinct honor to announce that Hunter College has partnered with Gotham Gives and Google to create the first program to train teachers specifically in the discipline of computer science. Hunter is proud of our leadership role in creating this program, and I wish to extend a deep thanks to our friend and partner, Fred Wilson, who has been a key advocate for expanding computer science education in public schools, for believing in the importance of our certification program for our teachers. Tonight, we celebrate this program, which recognizes the importance of computer science education as a content area. Just like a math teacher or a history teacher has to be trained to be an expert in their subject matter areas, as well as developing the expertise in the pedagogical delivery of that content, teachers teaching computer science must be trained in both content and pedagogy. As all of you joining us tonight are aware, there's a crying need to improve computer science in our high schools. 50% of New York City New York State school students attend a school that offers computer science, but only 4.3% of these students are enrolled in a foundational computer science course. And the diversity of students who choose to study computer science is also a challenge for us. Only 34% of students enrolled in computer science courses are female. Black students remain 1.3 times less likely than their white and Asian peers to attend a school that offers computer science. So it's no surprise, but a continuing disappointment that as of 2018, only 17% of tech workers were black or Latinx and only 23% were women. Research shows that early computer science education can support higher rates of college attendance, problem solving and career success. It can also foster stronger computer literacy, digital citizenship, and computational thinking. That's why this partnership is so important for our city and the nation. We are deeply grateful to Gotham Gibbs and Google for helping to make Hunter College the new gateway to computer science education and training in New York. And tonight we pledge to repay your faith by arming new generations of students and teachers with the skills to make them more competent and more competitive than ever in computer science. I mentioned Fred Wilson earlier, but you could never say enough about Fred's advocacy, innovation, and brilliance. His tireless efforts ensure computer science for all is not just the name of an organization, but a reality in our public schools. I want to also acknowledge Sarah Holloway at Gotham Gives, who has been an early believer on our work at Hunter College and a true partner. And a special thank you to someone well known to so many of you, one of the great thought leaders in tech, particularly in the urban space, Andrew Rigey. We are grateful to have Andrew chair our computer science advisory board at Hunter College. And it was Andrew who helped bring Mike Szymanski to Hunter. We'll hear more later from Mike Z, but with his work on this program, Mike has once again proved he's the Pied Piper of computer science in New York. A special thanks to the Dean, the Silverstein Dean of Education, Michael Middleton at Hunter and William Sackis, the chair of our computer science department for their efforts to make this initiative successful. 
And of course, our deep thanks to the team at Google for joining Gotham Gives and supporting this initiative. It's a pleasure to work with our longtime partners, Angela Pinsky and Sarah Henderson. We are grateful for their enthusiasm and for, for this program. And now a final thank you goes to Aparna Papu, VP of Engineering at Google. In her role at Google, Aparna leads Google's communication and collaboration products, including Google Workspace. Aparna, as a female leader in the tech field, you are a true inspiration to our students. And we're delighted you can join us to, this evening to share some remarks. Please welcome Aparna Papu. Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us this evening. I am Aparna Papu, Vice President of Engineering and a site lead for Google's NYC office. On behalf of Google, I'm thrilled to participate in this evening's event, even though it's virtual for me, and to announce our partnership with two incredible forward-thinking institutions, Hunter College and Gotham Gives, to advance computing education and careers for New Yorkers. Particularly happy this is happening during National Computer Science Education Week. Google and New York City have sustained a long and happy partnership over these last 20 years. The energy, the customers, the community, the local partners, our very opinionated users who will often stop us on the street and offer feedback on our products. But above all, smart, diverse, talented people are what keep us rooted here. And this is why we've deepened our commitment by positioning New York as a strategic growth site for Google. As our local workforce grows from roughly 12,000 to over 14,000 in the next coming few years, our leadership team is committed to a vision that Google New York will look like New York. How are we going to do that? This is going to be a collective effort and require investment in addressing systemic educational challenges and inequities every step of the way from cradle to career. We look forward to explore policy and programming that can democratize computing education and transform that into a career and to learn much more from our expert panel this evening. With such incredible local talent and equally steadfast educators and community partners, we are confident that Google New York, as well as the broader tech sector, will reflect the local workforce and that we can grow alongside a remarkable, diverse city. Thank you. Thank you, Aparna, for such important and, uh, remarks and for being such a wonderful partner. I'm delighted now to introduce the moderator for tonight's panel, Dr. Basil Smythe is the newly appointed director of the public policy program at Roosevelt House. After a national search, it was clear there was no better person to inspire our students and help guide our public policy curriculum than Basil. Hunter's motto is mihi cura futuri, the care of the future is mine. And at Roosevelt House, we live this motto by developing tomorrow's leaders and public citizens. We are so fortunate to have someone of Basil's caliber and dedication at the helm of our public policy program. And if Basil looks familiar to you, you've likely seen him as a frequent guest on MSNBC and many other media outlets. Today, Basil will moderate a panel to explore this new partnership and discuss what the program means for our teachers, our students, and our city. I wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight to help us learn more about this program and to get out the word about how we're improving computer science education. It is my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Basil Smythe. Thank you so much, uh, President Rapp. I am really uh, grateful and, and, and thankful that I have the opportunity to moderate this panel at such an amazing, uh, and such an amazing time. For all of you that are watching us via Zoom this evening, you have an opportunity to participate also. There is a Q&A function um, on, your, on your Zoom screen, and we encourage you to use that um, to type in uh, questions or comments for this panel. I'll be checking them uh, regularly to make sure that uh, we 
um, have the ability to really uh, get at some of the audience questions and concerns. So I'll repeat that a couple of times throughout this these next few uh, minutes. Um, but please feel free to use that Q and A function um, to ask us, any of the panelists, um, any questions that uh, that may arise. So let's get right into it. Let me introduce uh, at, at first Fred Wilson, who you who heard a lot about uh, a, a few moments ago. Fred is a venture capitalist, currently a partner at Union Square Ventures, USV. Um, USV typically invests in technology companies that have the potential to fundamentally transform important markets. Fred believes technology can make it easier and more affordable to learn, access existing knowledge, and contribute to human progress. He's also the chair of Computer Science for All. Uh, that initiative is helped launch, which he helped launch in 2015. He's co-chair of Tech NYC and served on the city's Fair Recovery Task Force. Fred sits on numerous boards of for-profit companies and nonprofit organizations, including Etsy Inc. and The Shed at Hudson Yards. He also writes a daily blog, which I encourage you to check out. Fred, thank you so much for being with us this evening. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, and, you know, computer science education is a passion uh, project of mine. I think it's um, really critical that uh, these, these next generations who are growing up in New York City and, and frankly everywhere around the world uh, get a computer science education. Uh, no, I think no matter what you do um, uh, in, in your line of work, it's something that's important to understand and have some foundational knowledge. And obviously for people who go deep on it, it's a great career. So, uh, uh, so I'm uh, really motivated to try to make that opportunity available to everybody. Thank, thank you so much, Fred. And I wanna uh, turn next to Mike Zemanski. Mike's a distinguished lecturer uh, and a computer science education coordinator here at Hunter College. Um, as a professor at Hunter College, he's working on two major projects. First, building and operationalizing the advanced computer science certificate program to certify middle and high school computer science teachers. Additionally, Mike has created and built a CS undergraduate honors program called Daedalus, one of the few CS programs that in addition to giving students all the computer science background and theory will connect students to current industry practices and opportunities. Uh, Mike, it is a pleasure to have you with us this evening as well. Uh, thank you, and, and I'm very excited to be here, and I'm very excited to be at Hunter um, when, when uh, Jennifer Robb, when President Robb pulled, uh, pulled me in to help work on these initiatives with the entire Hunter team. Um, it's a complete cycle from building the teachers who then teach the te students in K-12, who then send them to Hunter to get the best and best value computer science education out there, and then to send them out into the workforce and then the cycle continues. So it's just a very exciting time to be a Hunter and in New York City. Thanks so much, Mike. And finally, Jack Palladino. Jack is a teacher at the Urban Assembly School for Math and Science in the Bronx and has had multiple years of experience teaching computer science to his students. Jack participated in the inaugural cohort of the Advanced CS Teaching Certificate Program at Hunter, an alum, and can speak to the value of participation in the program as well as how it has evolved and improved his mastery of the content and approach to teaching. Jack, thank you as well for joining us today. Thank you very much, Basil. That was, uh, that was wonderful. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jack Pailuna. I'm very excited to share my insights about what that program was like and its influence on my teaching practice as a computer science teacher. Thank you so much. And let's let's get right into it. You know, at, at code.org's uh, CS EdCon, it was announced that the US has officially crossed the threshold of 51% of high schools nationally offering computer science, and New York State is at 50%. Yet we still see strong disparities in the percentage of students who actually enroll in the coursework, with many of those disparities around socioeconomic, racial, and gender lines. With this week being CS Ed Week, the annual call to action to inspire students to learn computer science is certainly with us and present. Why is CS education a critical investment for New York City? Uh, 
I'd ask if you start start us off, Fred, with uh, with a response to that. Well, look, I mean, the, 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 we we're seven years into computer science for all, and we have gone to great lengths to make uh, teacher training available to every teacher and every school in the city. And yet what we see is that those communities and those schools that have uh, challenges, big challenges, the kinds of challenges, you know, that get in the way of kids uh, getting to school every day and, and you know, getting to school with um, the right frame of mind, um, you know, they have a harder time. Uh, they have a harder time adopting computer science. They have a harder time prioritizing computer science. They have a harder time making time in their schedule for computer science. And, and I'm not saying that these are problems we can't overcome. We can overcome these problems, but you know, it's just it's 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 just this. It's a truism that the education system isn't really level and fair for students anywhere in New York City or anywhere. And what we have to do, I think, the answer, certainly the answer for computer science for all, is we got to put more dollars against the schools that are struggling and you know, rely on the schools that are succeeding to continue to succeed with a little less of our support. And, and that's, I think, what's going to have to happen in order to change those numbers. And Jack, uh, let me ask you a version of that question, because we're talking here about CS education and why it's critical for New York City. You're working with these young students every day. Tell us about the students that you work with and what impact this is going to have on uh, yes, so I teach at the Urban Assembly School for Applied Math and Science, which is in the South Bronx. Uh, the majority, well, all of my students are African American, Latin American. Uh, socioeconomically, um, we do teach in the one of the poorest congressional districts in the country. Um, but for them in general, you know, they are, my students are wonderful. They're energetic, they're enthusiastic, and they're hungry for something to grab onto that they can use. Um, I mean, we have problems coming off the pandemic right now, but I feel like kids are more than ever, they've rethought how they think about school, just as we all have. We're all, we're all kind of rethinking life. I feel like kids now more than ever are thinking about what do I, like, how do I use this more than ever? Um, I am, I feel like I'm in a really interesting position right now where I have students that are facing so many barriers that are beyond their control. And yet here I am and I can teach them something that is so powerful, permissionless and free. Mm -hmm. That it's something that could just absolutely level the playing field for them. And I, I'm just, I, I'm, I feel very fortunate that I, I can deliver something like that to them every day. Right. Uh, and thank you because Mike, as I, as I turn to you and I think about, you know, this is, this, is a, this is a task that falls largely on your shoulders. If I think in terms of pedagogy and content, what are the, what are the students gonna learn? Like take us through what your role here is and, um, and why that's important to this, to this overall effort. Um, yeah, I think one of the one of the huge barriers we face is we just don't have um, teachers that know both the, the content they need and how to teach it. Um, we, we do have some teachers who, well, I mean, Jack is now one of the people who do have all of that, um, but he also has the magic. He had the magic coming in. Uh, but even if you have the magic, you still need to know how to do it within the field. Um, and that that's um and that's where having these full these these pre-service and in-service programs like our certificate program and our master's program come into play um, a computer science teacher needs to know beyond all of the computer science that a high school student is going to need or a k-12 student is going to need so it has to be beyond the advanced placement exam they also need the breadth they need to know, they don't have to know everything. They don't have to have a course in machine learning and a course in um, artificial intelligence, but they also need, but they need a little of all of that. And so it really has to go across. You also need to have content that spans the field. And while doing that, it also has to talk about 
the ethics involved and mm -hmm. equity involved and all of the things that usually get left out. I mean, one of the highlights of our program is I think we have a really strong ethics course as part of our program. Um, and then the whole bit of how to teach it. Um, so much of what's happening in the country to prepare mm -hmm. teachers are just, I call it, you take it, you teach it. Um, the teachers take a version of a CS course that an eighth grader will take and then now you can teach it. It doesn't work that way. You, you have you. It's much deeper than that, which is why in our program, we also have a curriculum development course and a methods course where teachers design experiences around their students, around their population. So it's really, it's really a custom education for the teachers and for the students where they're at. Now, um, Jack, did you wanna uh, chime in? Yes, I wanted to just build off what Mike said about breadth. Mm -hmm. um, had I not done this program, I mean, I came into this program, I was a hobbyist, I still am a hobbyist programmer, um, but I'm learning everything very piecemeal, just stack overflowing and YouTubing and putting it all together, mostly myself. But when I came into this program, I started to see that these concepts are being applied everywhere all around me. Like through this program, I learned about different data structures and, and when I started thinking back about past work experiences, I was realizing that, oh, like the way we used to organize that warehouse at that factory in Brooklyn, that was a stack. I wouldn't have known that had I not taken, I would have, I might not have learned about data structures had I not taken this course. Um, President Rabb, I, I want to, I want to come to you because we've, uh, Aparna talked about democratizing computer education. And I remember when I was young, I had a Commodore 64 and learned to, to, to program in basic. Uh, that was a long time ago, but I didn't really find anything to help sort of build on that interest then. Um, if we're talking about democratizing computer education, I know there are programs that exist and Hunter has a dataless program that was mentioned earlier. Could you talk a little about how um, that helps to address some of the disparities in, in this kind of education? Absolutely. I, I think there's two ways that Hunter addresses this issue of really equity within computer science education. So the first is one of the programs that Mike C runs, and that is the Dataless program. We realized that there were students out, particularly in the New York City public high schools and the ring of the suburbs around, that had a passion for computer science or technology. And we now select these students and they get a very generous support system. They get scholarships. They have the personal attention in a cohort of Mike Z. They have specialized classes designed for them. And they have experiential learning to give them the confidence that they can compete in which is often a very elite workplace. Um, one of the, some of the hardest jobs in the industry to get in elite institutions require this level of confidence that our students, often first gen students, minority students, and of course the women in this program really need that support and the tools of the trade to be able to compete. So by creating this pipeline of first gen minority women students at Hunter, we are now incredibly successful in sending them out into the workplace into some of the best jobs um, in the city and in the country. So it's a very, it's a clear focus on creating a pipeline. I also wanna build on what Jack and Mike said about teacher training because that Basel is also part of democratization. We need the talent in our public schools to train the students in high school so they are really prepared to be computer science majors. The reason Hunter created this program is that we knew the teachers needed both the content learning and you heard it from Mike and you heard it from Jack and that special pedagogical expertise that allowed them to be a computer science teacher. And as I mentioned in my opening remarks, we take it for granted that a history teacher would be trained in history. But until this program was launched, so many people were like Jack wanting to teach computer science, but not necessarily having all the tools, as he said, to be able to have the expertise in content and in pedagogy. And that's what this program does for the first time. We're recognizing that for us to succeed as a society, society, 
high school students and middle school students need that specially trained teachers. And if we can train them and with Gotham Gives and Google support, get them through our programs and send them out to all the public schools, we can make a difference because we can have these, this expertise, the content and the role models in front of these young people that will give them the confidence to choose computer science as a major when they get to college. Right. And, and I, you know, and I, and I want to pivot be, to Fred because in all that you said, I, I can't imagine that um, all of what needs to happen is done in a vacuum. We have to consider state and local policy making as well, right? So um, what policies at the state or district level do you believe can help advance this work? And I want to add, I want to add on a piece to the end of that because we have a question from George who's typed to uh, who's typed this in our Q&A. And again, for those who wish to ask a question, please do not hesitate to put it in the Q&A. So in addition to what state and local policies might help advance this kind of work, uh, will uh, is New York City on track to meet their CS obligation for 2025? And will new legislative policies be needed to increase access in the public school? So it's kind of, kind of a combined question. Well, so the answer to the, are we on track? The answer is yes, we're seven years in and, and we've trained about 3,500 of the 5,000 teachers we wanna train. But the truth of the matter is we gotta train more than 5,000 teachers because uh, you know teachers retire, teachers uh, leave New York, teachers, um, you know, there's, 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 there's turnover. And so part of what makes the Hunter program so important is it's another way and, and possibly a better way to train teachers. Um, and um, so, yeah, New York City is going to meet or exceed uh, the goals, the 10 year goals of the Computer Science for All program. I think it'll turn out to have been one of the great public private partnerships um, in recent history in New York City. Um, and I'm very proud of the work that's being done um, by the people who are actually on the ground executing it. Um, but I don't think it's enough. Um, and there's more to do. In terms of policy, look, the state sort of creating a certification for computer science teachers was a big deal. That happened, I don't know, two or three years ago. I think it may have happened in some measure in reaction to computer science for all and some of the other great work that folks like Mike and, and, uh, and Jack and others are doing to create the demand out there. Um, but the state, you know, defines the the, the public education policies for all of New York State, including what goes on in New York City. And so creating a certification for the teachers allows institutions like Hunter to create uh, curriculum and class opportunities for teachers that allow them to get certified. And that's a very uh, virtuous circle because then the teacher gets certified, the teacher potentially can earn more money, which then creates the demand for the certification and the whole thing kind of just works. And so I think that's a big deal. Uh, very few um, teacher uh, teaching institutions um, have adopted the certification um, curriculum yet. Have, and so Hunter is really a leader in that regard. And um, I, I really hope that the other big teacher colleges in the city and the state follow Hunter's lead um, because uh, we, you know, Hunter can't do it all. Um, although, you know, maybe Jennifer and Mike think they can <laughs> love to see Hunter do it. But, you know, we're training 500 teachers a year through CS for All, and it's going to be a while before Hunter can train 500 teachers through their certification program. Um, at Gotham Gives and Google, you know, we'd like to see Hunter scale up this program uh, aggressively. Uh, but we also understand that they need to maintain quality and they need to do it in a way that that, you know, um, work sustainably. And so uh, they will they will scale it up, but it will take time. And so um, I guess just to wrap, this is a, I've been working on computer science education in the public schools for over 10 years now, uh, going back to the Bloomberg era. And this is a long uh, sustained effort. Mike started, you know, the computer science program at Stuyvesant in the mid nineties. Okay. So you know, it's, it just takes time and we're making a lot of progress, but we need to make more progress and we will make more progress. I'm not sure what additional legislation we need. We need administrations at the city and state level and, uh, and folks at the DOE and the state education department 
to understand how important computer science education is. Um, and I think we're getting there on that, but um, I don't know that we need any new legislation. Mm. Yeah, me? I'm sorry. Can I pick up on that, Basil? Because yes, uh, Fred makes this a great point. When the certification uh, was approved, it was a sea change because before that, the state did not necessarily recognize the importance of having certified teachers in this area. And I actually, Hunter led this conversation and I went to testify myself in front of the Board of Regents because I felt it was important as an educator to bring this conversation forward to the decision makers and show both Hunter's commitment to move this forward, but just the necessity. And it was not always obvious to all of the policy makers that this was the right way to go. I think now it's clear and um, you know, it's been a very important point. And I think Fred's absolutely right. Now that we have that support from New York State as a certification, the answer now is real advocacy that everybody on the Zoom can join us in. We need the new Board of Education. I'm very optimistic um, with our new chancellor that this is something he's, that he understands and is gonna support. But we need the local schools throughout the state to, to push this forward now that we have the certification. Jennifer, look, I just, I wanna, I wanna add uh, that I'm certain that David understands this is important because I've had that conversation with him as, as I'm sure you have had. Um, and in his remarks this morning, he mentioned um, STEM education and pathways to jobs in, in technology specifically. Um, so, uh, yeah, I really believe that, uh, Eric and David understand how important this is and will be champions of it, um, which is great, you know, and we've had, we've had other school leaders and city leaders who've understood it, but I think they might understand it more. And that's really good. Let me just interject for a second, because if you hadn't seen the news today, the David that has been mentioned is David Banks, who is... <laughs> Uh, who Eric Adams, the incoming mayor, announced uh, would be his uh, um, his school's his next school's chancellor. So we're we're speaking about uh, David Banks here. Um, Mike and Jack, you had some points that you wanted to make, and then I had some questions for you as well. But Jack, go ahead first. Oh, sorry. Well, Mike had his hand up first. I'll let him know. Okay, go ahead. Mike. Um, yeah, just to, um, I, I do think eventually we'll need a little bit more in terms of regulation, but I don't think we're ready for it yet. Um, in terms of requiring a computer science experience as opposed to just offering it. Um, what the research has shown so far is if you, it's, if you build it, they won't necessarily come. Um, and um, wh whereas schools that are requiring computer science are doing much better in terms of um, underrepresented groups because once they get them in the classroom, they have a great experience and then they go on Whereas if it's just there, take it or leave it, people don't opt in. But of course, I don't think we're quite ready for that yet because we'll need, uh, we'll need a critical mass of highly qualified teachers. But in a few years, I think we'll be ready for that. Mike, I would second you on that. Um, we, we see it. And the way we see it in the, in the uh, cs for all data is that in the elementary schools where they deliver the computer science education as modules in the homeroom, we get equity. And then as we move up into the middle schools and the high schools where the CS classes start to become more opt-in, we lose equity. And, and so I do agree with you that the more we require it um, as a graduation requirement or whatever, then we'll, we will see more equity. But I also believe that um, elementary school is a big opportunity um, because we can deliver it in the homeroom. And uh, you know, it's a different kind of computer science education that you can do in elementary than you can do in middle, you can do in high school, these kids with different, you know, learning skills and, and, and different knowledge bases. But um, I really think that starting early and getting them to understand some of the basics and just understanding that they're good at it and they like it is really, really important. And we can do that at a very young age. I mean, Jack, you had uh, something you want to say, and then I have a question to you right afterwards. Yes. So Fred brought up, um, he brought up the, the need for administration to understand the importance of CS. And 
that makes me want to speak on how CS is kind of evaluated um, as an as an administrator when they walk into my room. Um, it's taken time for my principal to understand or to to really grapple with that. If a kid, if they ask a kid, you know, what are you working on? They can say what they're working on, but it doesn't work. The principal might then ask, well, why doesn't it work? And the kid very legitimately is going to say, I don't know. And mm -hmm. they need to, students need to sit with that failure, which is, I think, is very unique to CS. But it's taken time for my administration to get used to that, that like, they're not going to know the answer the first or the 20th time. Um, that has made my administration kind of readjust how they evaluate and see my room. Um, but in other schools where maybe one or two people who might not even be certified in the content area, they might be being evaluated possibly unfairly. And I think by maybe expanding a certification program like this, and then requiring that, that can help send a message of just how important this content is and it is to be treated as something very legitimate. Well, Jack, I think you just pointed out what I think is a feature, not a bug of computer science education, which is that most of the time when you write software, it doesn't work properly the first time you write it. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole concept of debugging software. And it's not something that students necessarily run into. Um, you know, they'll they'll write a they'll write a, a a paper that's not perfect, but they can submit it. You can't submit a software product that crashes, right? If you make a, if you tell a robot to go down the hallway and make a right and go into the next room and it crashes into the wall, well, obviously your pro, your program doesn't work. And so, the reason I, I want I want to double down on this is that I think that's teaching a really really important learning skill and a really really important life skill to students that I. I, you got to grind on something, you know, and and it's it's true that you got to edit a, a a paper. You have to double check your math, but students can get away with not doing those things in math and English. They can't get away with doing it in computer science. So I think that there's a lot of really valuable life skills and learning skills that they learn um, in computer science. That's actually an extraordinary point that you don't really, you don't really often think about, right? That you you sort of have to get it right. <laughs> Uh, there isn't much, there isn't really any, any wiggle room there, right? Um, that's, a, that's an extraordinary point. And, um, and you know, and, and, and it's like solving a puzzle, right? Like everybody, well, a lot of people like to solve puzzles. And I, when I was a kid, I liked to solve puzzles. And, and you know, that's kind of what happens with software is like, if it doesn't work, then you kind of got to figure out why didn't it work? And you got, it's, for some kids, it's really fun. You know, they really like doing it. So, um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to like about computer science education for for kids. Yeah. Jack, I want to come back to you, and then Mike, I, I have a. I, I would love to ask you to sort of think through the same question. Um, this is actually coming from Daniel. Uh, Daniel says, "I hear a lot about training high school teachers. What about middle? What about teachers in middle and elementary school, as they may not be required by the state to have certification? How can we make sure that they are prepared to teach their student?" to get them ready for high school computer science courses. And I guess this also speaks to sort of a pipeline issue. Um, how, how would you, how did you address that? Jack and I'll ask Mike the same question. So if I'm understanding the question correctly, it's how do we prepare, how do we make sure that students going into high school are prepared for a computer science? Right, so not just high school teachers, but also elementary and middle school. Um, I mean, I would suggest hmm. implementing more algorithmic thinking and problem solving, spatial reasoning, um, and kind of, I don't know how, I, I don't, I would suggest more things involving trying to visualize abstract ideas. Um, I'm trying to think now of the kind of lingering issues that come up time and time again. And it's usually things involving, if, if I'm working in scratch, students really struggle with the idea of a coordinate plane and mm -hmm. that this sprite exists on an invisible x y axis and you the programmer have to tell it everywhere to go um so things like spatial reasoning and algorithmic thinking and problem solving would be i mean that's that's all of it if a kid goes into high school and already knows understands the concept of a conditional statement as a cause and effect 
well, then you just, you've made my job <laughs> way, <laughs> way easier. Understood. Uh, Mike, how, what do you feel about that? How do you think about that? Yeah, and, and just to uh, look at this from a couple of sides. Um, on the one side, one side, the um, the state did make this a K-12 certification. Um, so, of course, an elementary school teacher could get the whole shebang. But the truth is, they don't need APCS and beyond. They need a different set of skills. So, yes, a an a, um, an early grade teacher particularly will benefit tremendously from our methods course and our curriculum development course, um, but there's also going to be a lot of things that are just so far beyond what the students are ready for, and the state may very well not require them to get that. Um, but also, as Fred said, um, a lot of the early grade teaching isn't being done by the computer science specialist, it's being done by the generalist, the Home, you know, home, uh, home class teacher, the, the teacher that teaches the majority of the subjects. Um, and one of the projects that we've been working on at Hunter for the last couple of years, uh, thanks to the generosity of the Robin Hood Foundation, um, has been trying to work out how can we integrate computer science education into the primary grades when the instructor is going to be, uh, is not going to be the computer science specialist. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been working uh, with a, a couple of STEM teachers on faculty and a, a couple of language teachers on faculty. It doesn't always have to be STEM. Um, working on developing how can we get concepts like computational thinking, um, algorithmic thinking, debugging, um, like what Fred said about getting problems wrong and then grinding through it. Um, but even there, there are issues where we do need support from the outside. Um, a school may not have uh, for the primary grades, the, the technical equipment to do what we would call plugged activities, the programming stuff, the robotic stuff, because they just don't have the hardware. Um, and so they can only do the unplugged. So, um, you know, again, thanks to the great support that we've had internally at Hunter and the support from Robin Hood, uh, we've been able to make some headway into trying to figure out how we can support our primary school teachers. Um, but this is also another opportunity for outside partnership to make sure that, you know, let's lessen that digital divide in terms of what those, um, you know, those, those more challenged schools have in terms of equipment so that we can actually bring them the plugged activities as well. Yeah, look, it, might be, it might be the case that um, we don't really want to do dedicated computer science classes until you get to high school. It might be, we're doing them now in middle school and it might be that that's actually not the right idea. It might be that the right idea is to do modules, computer science modules in the elementary and middle school and not really introduce dedicated computer science classes until the high school for a lot of the reasons Mike just said which leads me to believe that maybe the right model is in the elementary schools and the middle schools is to have a computer science specialist who walks into the homeroom or walks into the math class and helps the homeroom teacher or the math teacher do a computer science module. Um, of course, that's a resource that isn't currently funded in any elementary school or any middle school. So, you know, that would that would take a lot of incremental investment. But, you know, I, it may well be that that's the better model because scheduling is such a big problem like there's not time in a school day to add a computer science class and so it doesn't happen but but the but the math class or the homeroom opportunity is there and that's a lot easier to do so that's another big learning that we've had you know in computer science for all that's and that's what jack was saying right that you that it may not be a dedicated course but there's certain concepts and themes that you can weave into other courses well like, so so you take take math for example exactly. like like you know, it, it, for kids, you know, one plus one equals two, they can do that on their hand, or they can do two minus one is one, they can do that on their hand. And even division, they can start to think about, well, you know, if I break four into two things, that's four divided by two is two. But the minute some teacher stands up and says to them, X is a function of Y, we lose a lot of kids. They just can't get there. They can't go from something that's tangible to something that's a little bit more kind of that's intangible funny. or yeah. abstract. And that is where I think computer science can help enormously is by using visual experiences, game-like experiences to treat, to teach things like functions and more abstract mathematic concepts. And I think the same thing's true in science. So, you know, that's another reason why we might want to think about computer science as a module um, and not necessarily a dedicated class until you get to high school. 
President Rapp. I wanted to just pick up Fred and Jack both mentioned math. And that's one of the things we find also on the college level, as Mike knows, if students are not strong in some of the fundamental <laughs> mathematical abilities, there, it's gonna be very hard for them to succeed in computer science. And we found it interesting in the 90s, I think many of you remember when the, the bubble and everybody wanted to be part of this new industry, we had an incredible increased bump in majors in computer science, but it did not become a successful venture because students began to realize the fundamental expertise in math needed to be successful. So I think that's also part of what Fred and Jack are saying. That skill has to be developed as well in the schools to be partnered you know, with this expertise. Um, we're getting a lot of um, per audience questions. So I'm gonna go there shortly, but I do have one that I'd like to throw out to everyone uh, before that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's happening outside of the school, outside of the classroom. How do we get um, the community to support? What are the, um, the, the community stakeholders that uh, could support the advancement of this kind of education? What partnerships, relationships, stakeholders supports do you believe are essential? I throw that to, to anyone that can answer. Well, listen, I, I, it's, a, it's such a great point, and I think we have done very little here. Um, whether it's church leaders or community leaders, elected officials, you name it, there are people in the community who can, you know, get the parents um, and get, you know, other influencers to understand how important this stuff is. And a lot of these kids, you know, they, they don't even think that this is something that they can do, which is ridiculous. Any kid can do this. Any kid can do this. No question in my mind about that. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's really important. I think somehow we got to figure out how to do that better. Um, and that's, 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 that's a place I think Eric Adams and David Banks can help with, because I think they, they, they understand those, those communities and those community leaders. And we just got, we got to do a better job at that. Um, if these communities start to see this as a way for their kids to succeed in life, then, you know, I think we'll see a lot more enthusiasm and adoption and more pressure on the school leaders to, to, to make a real commitment to this. As Jack said, a lot of school leaders are still uncomfortable with this. They, they don't necessarily know that it's working for their kids. They don't know how to evaluate. It's not something they've ever seen before. We, gotta, we just gotta get them more comfortable with it and more bought into it. Mm. The, um, uh, on on uh, another side of that, that's all incredibly important. Um, and, um, but another side of it, there's a, um, a wonderful program out there uh, called Teals. Um, and, and I've been a big supporter of theirs for a long time where they send software engineers and actually also college students um, into work in public school classrooms. And they've been shifting their model, or at least they told me pre-pandemic, they were trying to shift their model to go less in the co-teaching as teachers learn how to teach CS and more to be kind of uh, TAs in the classrooms. And where this can have a great impact is, um, for a lot of students, you know, you can't be it if you can't see it. Um, and it's an opportunity. And I'm also very proud of the fact that we've had a good number of, of, of Daedalus students act as Teal's volunteers um, to pe put people into the classrooms that look like the students. So they can see, hey, I can be that. I can be that Google engineer in six years. Um, and I think that can go a long way to show both the, the kids that it's a future, it could add resources to the classroom, and also it can show the administrations and the adults in the room that, look, your kids can become this because look at these volunteers, they are this. Um, and so I think um, leveraging the tech community in that way through programs like Teals or other similar programs can, can be, um, we, we can really leverage that to a tremendous advantage. Mike, um, you know that I've been a big supporter of Teals for many years mm -hmm. and a big fan of it. The, the, I think the big unlock has been um, the rapid uptake of um, virtual environments like the one we're in right now. It's a hell of a lot easier for a Google engineer to appear in a classroom in this way and, and help teach a class on a, on a complicated subject that maybe the teacher themselves is not that strong in. Um, it's, a, it's a much bigger ask to ask that Google engineer to get on a subway and go out to the South Bronx or South Brooklyn and do that. So 
I'm really hopeful that we'll have enough infrastructure in the school buildings that will allow that to happen. I have no doubt if, if um, we can make that happen, I think software engineers would love to do that. Uh, it's just, I mean, I've never met a software engineer who didn't want to help somebody learn something, right? So I, I think it's a big opportunity. I, you know, I would add on the higher ed space, um, certainly the private partnerships have been invaluable. And we've seen a change in private industry being more willing to look at the public universities where you get the diversity for the talent for internships. And that's been a big change. Fred mentioned embedding professionals in the curriculum and in the classroom. That has been revolutionary at Hunter in terms of making sure that the students are learning what industry is expecting. The nonprofit community as well, in terms of the pipeline, we have groups called the One Group Women in Technology that create spaces for women to get the top internships. So the nonprofit world, the uh, private sector, but I wanna give a shout out also to New York City, which is in the last five years created a program called CUNY 2X, and it has supported a number of change supported curricular change in the CUNY schools, supported this embedding of professionals and also in creating internship pipelines where our students who many of whom have not had the experience of having an internship are understand and learn how to get the best internship, how to get the first internship before they get the second uh, more elite internship. And it really, someone used the word leveling the playing field. The city with its investment in the CUNY infrastructure and technology has leveled the playing field. Hunter, it's our, on our own. We've doubled the number of computer science majors in the last five years. And that's a pretty extraordinary statement coming from a public school uh, in New York City. So I think that's, you know, on the education of in higher education, the city, the private sector, and the nonprofits have all been incredible partners, and they need to continue to do so if we're going to make this change. And, and Jack, finally, you know, before we come off of that, I, since you're on the ground um, and you, you're engaged with parents and I imagine community leaders and perhaps organizations every day, um, how have they been receptive? Can they see the sort of not just the pipeline, but the, the, the rationale, the reason for this, the importance of this, can they see it through your own motivation for the work that you do? I think that the reason we might not see so much adoption in certain areas is because, so my answer to your question would be, unfortunately, no, a lot of communities might not see the rationale for it because this is a very foreign concept, not just to the students, but to the, the family surrounding that student. Um, mo I'm, I mean, a lot of my students don't really know anyone that works in tech in some capacity. Um, the community leaders might not know anyone that works in tech in some capacity in this way. So I think if in terms of partnerships that if, I think it would, it's gonna take a more aggressive role from outside the community to go in and form part and take a more active role in forming partnerships because mom and dad might not know how this is useful. They might, they might not, they, they themselves don't might not see it because it was never taught to them. Uh, I understand. Um, we are, we are at a point in time when uh, I'd like to go more to audience questions, if you don't mind. Um, uh, we have some really good questions here. Um, when I uh, read them off, they're for anyone that uh, would like to answer. Um, so let me go first to webcsforall.org. Thanks for being with us today. That question, their question is, a network of advocates from New York State have created csfornewyork.org as a website to track New York CS implementation and the state level policies and initiatives that are out there. The big push at the state levels is standards. And I know Mike was part of that effort. How does Hunter see their expertise working in partnership with city and state efforts to advance CS education? Hi, Mike and Fred. They, they, they. <laughs> Um, well, uh, just to say we, we were at Hunter um, involved in that standards process. Um, and one of the things that we have to make sure that we're doing um, is that our program 
is aligned to those state standards and that are and that um, the, the teachers that come through our program uh, know how to implement the standards for their classes. So again, we, um, you know, one of our big, you know, one of the courses in our program is our curriculum development course where you're designing curriculum. <laughs> and that, that's, um, and a big part of that is looking at the New York State standards, but not just the New York State standards. It's also about looking at the CSTA, Computer Science Teachers Association standards, the Rhode Island stand, looking at other standards because New York doesn't have the monopoly on standards. And, and as an educator, um, it's important to know what other people are doing as well. Now, it's true that we are expected to teach to the New York standards, um, but it doesn't mean we can't go beyond that. It doesn't mean that we can't consider other things that are going on just to make sure that we bring the most value to our kids. Yeah. All right. Caroline says, thanks for a great panel. You're welcome, Caroline. Glad you could join us. Um, Jack and Mike spoke about advanced CS training and concepts for teachers. Is this program to support teachers with preparing to teach AP CS courses? Are there also teacher training opportunities for KA teachers who might be introducing students to CS? I think that part was answered before. What about the AP CS? Any thoughts around that? Um, well, since um, since um, I'm coordinating the program, I will. Uh, um, one of the things that I, I, I hate are they, you, you take it, you teach it, which is the term I used before. Um, so we don't, our program is not about teaching somebody's curriculum. But it's important that teachers that graduate from our program can teach any of those curricula or develop their own. Um, because really a teacher wants to own what they teach. Um, and that's why you have to know the CS beyond that highest level and as well as the breadth of computer science. Um, and, and so I think it's important for, and I really hope that as other programs come online, um, that they follow this lead and they don't just teach a narrow, we're gonna teach you how to teach APCS, but rather we're gonna teach you how to teach CS. Mm -hmm. And then you can teach APCS, you can teach pre-APCS, you can teach an advanced selective, you can teach a data science, you can do it all. Um, and that's what a good, you know, it's not about curriculum, it's about teacher. Mm -hmm. And a great teacher can do whatever the students need. And that's what we're working on building here at Hunter. And I think the teacher wanted to add something to that. Go ahead, Jeff. Yes, and that's that's what I got out of it. I mean, I learned a lot about I learned a lot of concrete CS concepts, but writ large, really, what I saw was how to structure a CS class to teach such a unique content area. I learned I, I've heard I'd heard of pair programming before. I'd never implemented it before. I went through this program, and we were pair programming. We were doing exactly what we want to hold students accountable to be doing in the room. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, Mike said it, the program's about learning how to teach a very unique subject area. And I, leaving it, I felt, I felt prepared to do that. We have just a few minutes left, but I can get to a couple of questions if I kind of combine them. So, Daniel and Ankit, to apologize if I misspelled that, uh, mispronounced that, um, had, they, there are two questions there that I'm gonna combine into one. How do we help computer science, how do we help get computer science into schools who have several other priorities and or are struggling already? Many schools who are somewhat interested have probably already at least dipped their toes into CS, but many others might not even approach it unless it's mandatory. And if students aren't ready for a required CS course, will there be a, gra a barrier to graduation? Well, look, I, I, this is where I started, you know, my comments. Uh, this is, I think, the most perplexing problem that we have dealt with at Computer Science for All. And the only answer that I can come up with is that we've got to free up resources for those schools. We've got to create, uh, we've got to hold hands, we've got to, like, spend time in the building, we've got to help those school leaders and those teachers figure out how to get it done, um, and get them over the hump. And I think once they're over the hump, get the teachers trained, get the classes going. I think we can sustain it, um, but we just got, it, it's just gonna require more investment in, in the schools that, that are struggling the most to implement computer science. And I, I don't have a better answer than that. I mean, to build on, to build off that, uh, Fred, um, I mean, the, one of the biggest issues in 
my school is that I, I, I'm fortunate that I work on a team. I work with two other teachers and we, we co-plan uh, a few of our CS classes together. But I know I've spoken with several CS teachers where their school is excited to teach computer science, but they're the one teacher in the building that is that understands the concept. Um, we need we need to throw numbers at the problem. We need more people that understand the content area so that people can plan together. This is not it's too there's too difficult or there's too big a learning curve for one person to try to start a program, learn the content and then turn around the next day after they've been up till one in the morning trying you know trying to understand the concept and then distill it down so that a student can learn it for the first time if they can be planning in teams that is a tremendous barrier if they can co-plan together and the more people understand it the more that can happen and i think higher ed can help that the more teachers and hunter produces with a certification when they're in the buildings the more classes and the more teamwork they'll be and i think to your point jack one of the our plans at hunter is to provide <laughs> post-service professional development and support for those of you who've taken this step to get this certification so that you have a home and a place where we can bring you together on a citywide basis to help you do professional development and to learn from you what works so we can help you share it through a network. Um, and, and that ongoing support is, is very important. And it's something that I think also can be done. It's important to do it at the right scale. Um, CS for all, tries to do it, but that's at too large of a scale. So an individual teacher gets lost. They um, like they have a slack, but it, it's too many people. Um, so, but we're more manageable in our cohort size. And so they have, we have our own slack and our own teachers, even if you're the only teacher in your school, you've got the other teachers in your cohort to work with. And in fact, um, Jack was hosting monthly meetings that would get us all together hey, what are you doing in class? Um, and that provides a lot of that support. So you're not the only teacher. Um, and that's something that, that we hope to continue to provide at Hunter um, in person in the future, not just online. Um, and the other point um, to address what Ankit said in his question on the chat is, it's also important that if you're gonna require the course, that it be the right course. Um, not a course that's going to clobber the kids and turn them all away. You can't offer APCS level A as your first required course. That's going to destroy your program. And that's why it's so important to be able to design a course appropriate for your population. That's going to get them in and get them excited. And that might look different in every school. But if you've got a great teacher at that school who knows this, the content and knows the pedagogy, they can do it and they're going to want to do it. Yeah. Um, just uh, we're going to do a lightning round if we can, just so we can um, be good on time here. Um, Migna Tavares says that she supports uh, the holistic teaching approach. Thank you so much for that comment. Noel has a, a question and comment, which is, I run a youth apprenticeship program that has many junior coder roles for Fortune 100 com companies. We noticed that many of our students are not being exposed to CS until taking an AP course in 12th grade. And if they are exposed, they often do not know how to code in a language such as Python. This is a little in the weeds. It would help our apprentices so much if they could access, if they had access to Python classes in ninth and ninth and tenth grade. How do we help students get access earlier? I mean, we may have touched on that already, but if anyone has a response. Well, look, I think you know, getting getting students access in elementary school would be good. Um, I'm not a particular fan of, of focusing on a single language. I think good. Good software folks can pick up any language. So I don't think that should be our goal to teach Python or to teach Java or to teach PHP or to teach JavaScript or whatever. But the fundamentals of computer science, I think we need to get in front of kids earlier and more consistently. And if we wait until they're senior in high school, that's 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 not soon enough in my view. And then the last question um, actually is from uh, Hunter alum. When I earned my degree in business education at Hunter in the 70s, uh, the department was considered to be second under the classics. Um, I regret that, the, that, the, that it was removed from the curriculum, but I'm excited to hear that the computer slash business uh, coursework has been reinstated. 
Um, and the suggestion here is to have Hunter's PR campaign praise the computer science program um, so that current and future educators um, uh, have a way to get it to get it to the, the high school students and, and, and more. So uh, thank you for being with us, uh, alum. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, and yes, I imagine coming from this, there's going to be a tremendous amount of activity to promote this, this partnership, which is extraordinary. Um, we have come to our time, um, but uh, President Rab, uh, you started us off. I didn't know if you had any words to, um, to close with us today. Just to thank you for being really an extraordinary moderator, uh, Basil, uh, Fred, for everything you've done um, to help Hunter get here and for the city. I'm glad that you're on the mayor's transition team um, and we look forward to more input into the public schools. Mike, you're a fearless leader and I thank our alum for raising the question of promoting. I'm asking all of our viewers to please help us recruit more Jack Paladinos to our program at Hunter College. Um, we need great talent and we are ready to support with financial aid and real commitment to training um, so many more hundreds of computer science teachers for the New York City and New York State public schools. So we're so thankful that everybody joined us tonight. This is the beginning of an important conversation. So please join us and please be part of our partnership. And I wish you all a great evening. For our panelists and audience members, thank you all very much for participating and joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.